Hey, Dad, what's your favorite thing about Christmas? Well, Landon, that's a loaded question, but my easy answer, I would say you guys. You, your sister, your mom, my immediate family, and my church family. I love you all. That's my favorite part about Christmas. Hey, Dustin, what was your favorite Christmas present of all time? My favorite Christmas present is when we get to all meet up as a family and we all get to spend time together. Garrett and Trevor, what are your favorite parts of Christmas? Mine is spending time with my family and celebrating Jesus' birthday. Mine is spending time with my family and celebrating Jesus. William, what is your favorite part about Christmas? My favorite part about Christmas is spending time with family that you don't normally get to see a whole lot. Good morning. We hope you had a marvelous Christmas morning yesterday. Today is Sunday, and we are here to worship, and this is our annual Lessons and Carols worship service. This is a service where we read the scriptures that go along with some of our favorite Christmas carols. Well, why do we have this service? Well, for a couple of reasons. Number one, because Christmas carols are fun to sing. I mean, we've been singing them for several weeks now, but today we really get to let it all out. And if, while you're at home today, we want you to sing at the top of your lungs. The words will be on the screen up here with the praise team. Sing all these favorite Christmas carols. You'll have a great time. And the second is there is a, a doctrine called the sufficiency of Scripture. And what we believe is that Scripture is so very important. And today, the sermon is the actual word of God. The scripture story of Jesus' birth foretold in the Old Testament and coming to fruition in the New Testament. It is the story of redemption of the Messiah, of the Christ child coming to earth. And we look forward to singing that story and reading the scripture of that story today. Let me open us up with a word of prayer, and then we'll have our first scripture reading. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you so much for sending Jesus to earth, Lord. We're so grateful for his birth, that he was born in a humble, stable, Lord, that he became human like us. Lord, we're grateful today for salvation that is found in him. Lord, the reality that we experience is one where we know that if we follow Jesus, our lives are so much better. So today we celebrate, Lord, we celebrate the Christ child born to earth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The first lesson comes from Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 to 15 and 17 to 19. It's about Adam and Eve disobeying God's command and disrupting the order and the goodness of of creation. Hear the word of the Lord. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called to the man, where are you, Adam? He answered, I heard you to the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. And he said, who told you that you are naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all other animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike at his heel. To Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife and ate the fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. 
For dust you are, and to dust you will return. The second lesson is from Genesis chapter 22, verse 15 to 18. God promises that through Abraham, all the peoples of the world will be blessed. The angels of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son and your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on a seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Stable and his cradle. 
Hi, my name is Nikki, and these are my sons, Garrett and Trevor, and we're reading the third lesson from Isaiah chapter 9. The people walking in the darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness. A light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it. With justice and righteousness from that time on and forever, the will of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. My sons, Jacob Vaughton and Brady Vaughton, and we are reading the fourth lesson from the 11th chapter of Isaiah. The Messiah will come from the root of Jesse to restore the peace of creation. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord, and he will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness, he will judge the needy with justice. He will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with his rod of his mouth. He will breathe the, with the breath of his lips. He will... He will slay the wicked. The wolf 
will wait with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and, and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed the bear with their, with their young will lie down together. The, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put his hands into the viper's nest. They will neither harm or destroy all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with knowledge of the Lord's has waters cover the sea. Okay, guys, I want you to think back. What is your favorite Christmas present of all time? The my Nintendo Switch. My family. Aww. Ava, what's your favorite part of Christmas? Spending time with my family. Hey, Dad, what's your favorite part about Christmas? Well, son, my favorite part about Christmas is the story of God's love. He sent his son Jesus for a sinner like me and you. Gives us a lot of hope. Also, 
I like the uh, Christmas season through the eyes of a child. It's very magical. I love you. Brian Giles, and this is my son, Landon Giles. We're going to be reading the sixth lesson today, which is Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Joseph and Mary travel to Bethlehem, where Mary gives birth to her child. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own towns to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. 
While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger and, uh, because there was no guest room available for them. Hi, I'm Ben Hoadley, and this is my handsome son, Luke Hoadley. We're going to do the seventh lesson, Luke 2, 8 through 16. And there were shepherds living out in their fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring in good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, I am the town of David. In the town of David, and a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger.
My name is Don Elmore, and this is my grandson, William Stepp. And we'll be reading the lesson eight today, which is Matthew 2, 1 through 11. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who's been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and we've come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Uh, hi, I'm Dustin, and this is my mom, Desiree. We're going to read the ninth lesson, which is found in John 1, 1 through 14. The word of God becomes flesh and lives among us, full of grace and truth. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made by him, through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and the only Son, the one who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. <laughs> 